Alright folks, hello and welcome back to Downstage Gaming. I am your host Josh, and this is part 9 of our Let's Play of Head as Code. When we last left off, we went on a little secret journey with uh, A, and A revealed to us quite a bit. Uh, basically, he, he's part of some rich company that, at least in part, is making stuff to help uh, blind and deaf people like E, but there's clearly a lot more going on there than just that. Uh, we didn't go into too much detail there. It, he basically basically set himself up as, as being directly opposed to everything that Smiley's doing, not just in the being trapped sense, but in like a greater sense. And uh, he went with us to the room that we had explored with Jasmine, the laboratory room. We checked out the secret room there. He implied that the ninth room was hiding in there, which seems, I don't know about that. But he also gave us this special remote that's supposed to be able to unlock any door but we have to know the right code to put in it, and we only have a limited number of attempts. Uh, so he put us in charge of that. Then when we got back, A pulled this nonsense of having us stick around in security duty with E while everyone else went to the rooms and made it seem like it was our idea. That was shady. Uh, but now we're here with E. We just explained to her everything. And I guess we're, our job is just to, like, look out for the ninth person. So... As I heard no train pass by, the ninth person wouldn't be getting by us yet. Still, I remembered what A had told me. The ninth person may very well be stationary, too. Seems more likely. I mean, honestly, it's probably something like the ninth person is one of us secretly. That, that, would, that, would, that would seem to me to be the most logical thing, but who knows. Uh, I didn't truly believe they were mobile, so I was probably going to explore a station regardless. Let us go now! We've wasted enough time. The others have been gone for a while, right? Even if she couldn't see me, I nodded. Force of habit. Gotta, gotta, gotta be thinking about others here, Simon. I took her to the other side of the station, down the stairs, into the lobby. Beyond it was the station. Then we waited for the train, in silence. I had very little to tell her, plus it was kind of annoying. <laughs> Instead, I tried to think about how I would tackle this strange endeavor. I wanted to try and unlock the door, but with limited chances, it wouldn't go so well. Re-exploring that station was also a waste of time, so I ignored it on our trajectory. Instead, we were going to explore... Grut! I forgot what the next one was. The official name was something or another, but what was there again, according to the maps? Isn't Securite the first one? Uh, the old man had them, and I forgot what it was. When the train arrived, I stepped in it with E. This entire trip would be a little boring. I didn't really have anything to tell E at the moment. Nothing much happened. The door is closed. Procane Station, Securite. See, I told you. As the train left the station, I suddenly remembered what it would be. Right, it was a security room, which seems like it could have some pretty important, meaningful stuff in there. I don't remember who it was that went there last time, though. Was that Marco and Dre? I don't remember. Right, it was a security room. The footage from the cameras looked pretty interesting to search. Maybe I'd find some secrets. Knowledge is power, huh? If I learned something A wanted to know, maybe I could use that and get him to admit everything he's doing. Need to know basis, my ass. I I would I would be way more cautious about speaking out loud here for a number of reasons. I mean, one, I don't fully, I, I don't want to go full Ray here, but I don't fully trust that E actually can't understand what we're saying. And plus, there's the thing of just generally that Smiley could be listening in, so it seems odd to be just talking out loud on the train here. Grumbled to myself in a Ray fashion before the train came to stop. Grabbing his hand, I pulled her out of the train. We both made for the staircase. Suddenly, I felt a shiver. This was dangerous. I didn't know anything of what was up these staircases. We could only be two at these stations, so... I wrote to E under the paper. I didn't want her to come up. It may have been slightly more dangerous to leave her down here. Yeah, this doesn't seem like a good idea. But it wouldn't be good if she came up and we all got beheaded because the ninth person was there. Why would that be? She nodded to me, understanding, and I was off into the lobby. Up the stairs. And finally into the room proper. Supers? Suppers? I don't know what that means. It's an interesting room. 
It had tons of screens. The twins solved this. Okay, it was the twins who went there. That's right, I do vaguely remember that. But I couldn't tell exactly what they did. In the middle of the room, there was a computer. I tried accessing it, and I found some files. There was a second room, and I'd get to it, but this seemed promising. I found many files, but they were all named gibberish, and they were all encoded, too. Couldn't watch any of them, even if they clearly were video footage. What is this screen looking at? What am I seeing? There was only one screen turned on, and the footage showed parts of a spacious room. There was a large arch right in front of the camera. On it hung some kind of hooked object. Huh. Nothing was happening in the view. I figured no one went through that room. Either the theater or the church, then. Went to check the other room next to this one, but seeing as it was full of electronics, I decided to cut to the chase and leave to head back down to the station. Since there were electronics, but nothing was functional. Sure, there were electronics, but nothing was functional. When solved, that room probably shut down on its own. That seems seems like a half-hearted search at best. I don't know, Simon. Back downstairs, I passed a paper over to E, explained the situation and what was upstairs. She giggled at my predicament. I didn't know what was so funny. Do you like spying on people while they don't know you're around? Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. I blushed a little at that accusation. Was this the time for teasing? What was up with these women dudes, to be honest? What is up with these women? First Jasmine, now E? I took her hand to pull her over as the train arrived. Oh, are we done here? No more spying? If this had been Marco, I would have punched his shoulder. You know, physical violence isn't the solution no matter who it is, bud. Even though I said I wouldn't leave at the science lab, I did anyway for a very cursory search. As I thought, nothing new was there. The next one was the one A had previously investigated. Oh, this is... This is the one that me and Jasmine, that Simon and Jasmine took a look at uh, after his amnesia bit at the very beginning. Which is interesting because we act like that room hasn't been solved, if I'm remembering correctly. So are we on some sort of different timeline here? Or did they have a reason to go back and search this room again for some reason? Huh. I thought it was a bit of a useless search, but I went to it anyway. And this is also where then Jasmine finds the remote. So that's interesting. The room was full of beds, supplies of the medical kind, so on and so forth. I didn't know how to use any of the devices in the room. I decided not to try, even if I felt that curious need, need pulling at me again. There was still no sign of a password. It's not eye or <laughs> brain? There was, uh, found various items like a tablet, but it wasn't in order, right? That's the one that we use in the, in the puzzle. Some other things stood out. Remnants of the puzzle they had to solve here. Reclined on a bed for a minute or so. It was rather comfortable. I could really take a good nap here. Still, I had a job to do, so I left the area and went down to the lobby. Just like the other stations, E had been left downstairs. Poor girl must have grown fairly bored by now. Maybe that explained why she teased me, not just once, but every time I came back down and told her told her about what I'd found. Oh, I know all this. I came to this room earlier with Agnos. Oh. It's a weird name. I'm trying to think if there's some weird, like, thing about this name, but... Hmm. He solved most of it, but I did help a little. He let me touch an object, and I guess it had to do with opening a door due to the button layout. The back had some braille, too, even if he didn't let me read that part. I was surprised. First of all, I now knew the old man's name, but also she hadn't teased me. Not only that, but I also learned the dots in the back of that remote were braille. Yeah, and so they found it here. After their search of this room. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, that would really suggest that the, the time that that uh, we have amnesia and go with Jasmine here is like a different timeline or something. Because we find that remote there too. Un unless something weird happens in between now and then. Huh. She was a gold mine of information. But you should have taken me up there too. Given my state, I need an operation, stat. 
You can be the doctor, right? She smiled and hid it halfway behind a hand. Perhaps I hadn't avoided the tease in the end. I sighed in the face of all this while grabbing her hand and pulling her over to the train. Since it had arrived, it was time to head to the final station before I'd explore a new one. In the train, I took a seat much like E did. I crossed my arms and decided to think over the subject of our names as Agnos finally became revealed to me. That's just such a weird name that it has to there has to be something about it. Come to think of it, I thought Jasmine was the one who came up with the nicknames. She was. At the time, it sort of made sense. I could understand the point, but now it didn't make sense. Brocane Station, Gymnasia. Why would she want to hide her name? Or my name? They weren't really rare names. It wouldn't really identify us except for Agnes. It's gotta be because somebody would know her name, but not her face or something like that. That, that, that That's my assumption. That was a weird name. <laughs> You're not wrong. Jasmine had made them up at his suggestion. It wasn't like I knew E, G, and H's names either. Maybe it was also a problem for one of them. I was curious, but I didn't feel right asking the first of that lineup. I had the opportunity, but ne neither the courage nor the willingness to be rude. I didn't want to ruin her companionship. She was comfortable. Not really nice. Not really annoying. Just comfortable. Like a nice couch. That's a weird way to describe it, but it's the best way to describe how I felt with her around. She was very soothing and calm and, I don't know, she was interesting. Developing a second crush here, Simon? Jesus. How many hours had it been since I arrived here? Must have been a few, at least. That sandwich I found and consumed was fairly far in the past now. Come to think of it, I blindly trusted that sandwich, didn't I? It was drugs. What if it had been poisoned? I shuddered at the thought while I waited for the train to arrive at the last of the four stations we were to re-explore. Unfortunately, I spent a little too long thinking about it. Did you miss the station? In my daydream, my eagerness to reach the next station, I didn't realize it had already stopped there. By the time I did, the speaker spoke again. Brocane Station. Eggly say. Crap. If the ninth person was at the gym station, they would have avoided my notice. Oh, what were my chances of them being there anyway? I mean, it would be very funny if it was if that was actually the case. What were the chances of there being a mobile person at all? The train stopped momentarily. Yeah, I mean, the only way the mobile thing is going to make any sense, I think, the ninth person being mobile, is if they have information. Like, if they have access to some sort of information that lets them know where people are going, or where they're at, or when they're using a train. Because otherwise, that's just impossible to avoid at this point. Train stopped momentarily. I disembarked with E, and then I explained to her how this wasn't an old station, but a new one, using a piece of paper which came from a quickly dwindling supply in my bag. Uh-oh. Oh, that sounds good for me still. Sorry about all the trouble, having to lug me around like a useless person. I hope I will be of more service soon. Come to think of it, I couldn't really tell her age, but she looked remarkably young. I did believe she was the slightly older adult, so maybe she was still in her late 20s? I wonder what she did. Did she study? Did she have a job? I wanted to ask her, but in the immediate, I couldn't do it. We need to hurry up if we want to solve this room quickly. I'll ask her after we're done here. We entered the lobby. The door closed behind us as usual. Wasting no time, we went up the stairs. What greeted us when we arrived up there was strange. I don't know what Inglese means. I knew what the speakers had said on the way here. They talked about a church. Oh, okay. However, never in my wildest dreams would I have figured out <laughs> that it was literally a church. Oh, we got the four symbols of, uh, four, four suits of the cards. Some kind of weird clover windmill thing. Hmm. These are a reflection of each other, color-wise. Just, just some things to note, although what, what do I care? Because apparently I never solve any puzzles in this game, despite my strong desire to. I haven't been in church for a long, long time. 
This is a big place. I looked up. The ceiling goes very, very high. That is a general thing about churches, Simon. A part of me wanted to stick around to appreciate the architecture, but we were pressed for time. Huh? A church? How weird. I don't know how much use I can be. If you find anything, let me know. Using a sheet of paper, I shared with her my first impression. He sat on a bench following... Sat on a bench following her words, and I was free to look around the place. I mean, we have to solve the puzzle ourselves this time. Nobody has solved it for us. But it still might do something automatically for us. Okay. So yeah, pretty, pretty typical church layout here, and there's no other signaled room. Alright. Well, let's, uh, I, I feel like I always start in the right for some reason, which is weird, because I feel like most people would start left or right. So let's start left this time. The architecture of this place was incredible. Placing a hand against the surface of a pillar, I could tell this was the real deal. But which church was this? It's not really a big room. Even if it's tall and wide, it's not as tall and as wide as churches might find a city. I wonder if this means I'm not over the ground here yet, either. I remember what I thought about in the library. The windows there were non-existent, but this place had a few of them in the back, and a few more along the walls, between pillars. Was it the same here? Were we confined here, too? It would seem likely. A sudden idea came upon me. If I broke those windows, maybe I could escape. Smiley definitely hadn't thought about this. However, I didn't want to anger any sort of religious deity. Yeah, you don't want to be smited for smashing a window. And if there would be any, just might be. Yeah. Grabbing a pot, I flung it right in a window. Okay, we're just doing this then, huh? The window resisted, so I tried again. And again, and again, and again. No matter how many times I tried, whenever I threw the pot in a window, it only resulted in a loud noise without anything breaking. Go figure. It wouldn't be this easy. Tried banging on the windows, too. I precariously stood upon one of the side altars and... Come on. Stained glass windows aren't this solid, are they? They feel like metal. Maybe they were. Maybe there were sheets of metal painted to look like stained glass windows. It would explain the noise I heard every time I banged my fist against it. Check out the pews. He was sitting on one of the benches. That's right. She looked a little lonely. Maybe I should talk to her and finally ask her about what she does in life. If I can somehow tie that together with what I already know... Then what? What would that accomplish? Knowing the link between us, what would that tell me? I realized I didn't really have a reason to uncover this, but I had to cling on to any piece of information that could help me understand Smiley's motive. We weren't grabbed without reason, right? Let's chat. As I walked by Yi, she sensed me and grabbed my arm. Hey, S, can you humor me? I want to talk about something I just thought about. I decided to sit on the bench next to her and allow her that much. You probably have never heard of it, but it's called the boy or girl paradox. There are two families, the Jones and the Smiths. Their family name doesn't really matter, it's just for difference. The two families have two kids. The Joneses really want, wanted boys. They wanted to beat the odds and get two boys. The first kid they got was, in fact, a boy. They rejoiced, and then they had a second kid to see if they could have the family they envisioned. Now the question is, what are the probabilities the second, younger one is a boy? I didn't know what to make of the question. I wrote 50% on the paper and handed it over, puzzled by the so-called paradox. She gave it back to me after beaming a smile. Yes, that's correct. It's 50%. Now the thing is, the Smiths actually have two kids already. They also wanted boys, but sadly enough, one of them turned out to be a girl. Oh, it's not sad for the girl, though. All of them got over it, and she's a treasure. She's as treasured as if she'd been a boy, mind you. Well, thank goodness. I was worried about the fictional Smith girl. Happy family. But the idea is that one of their two children is a girl. Now, what are the probabilities both children are girls? I was confused. I gave E the 50% paper back, figuring I didn't need to write anything else. That's correct. But it's also wrong at the same time. How, though? She continued, explaining after giving me a short moment to express myself. Anybody would be surprised at that revelation. See, in the first case, the first kid's gender was already established. 
In the second case, either kid could have been a girl. That means there are always four possibilities. Both children can be girls, both children are boys, the first one is a girl, and the second one is a boy, or the first one is a boy, and the second one is a girl. Imagine it like a set of zeros and ones. There are the numbers 00, 01, 10, and 11. That way, if you knew the first one is a zero, you can only have 00 or 01. If you don't know which one is a one, though, your options are 01, 10, and 11. Even though in both cases you know one of the numbers, it's not enough because each of them have their spot. That's why it's a paradox. It's both 50% and 33% at the same time. Do you understand? What do you think would happen if the Smiths had a hundred children instead of two? If I asked you, what are the probabilities all 100 children are girls if 99 of them are girls? According to this paradox, it would either be 50% or something incredibly, incredibly low at the same time. Wouldn't that be a way to turn a low percent in chance into a 50-50? I thought about it for a bit, but all it did was make my head hurt. It didn't make any sense. I asked her why she thought about all this. That's a good question. What brought this up, e? As I stood up and made my way out of the Rosa bench, I heard her answer. I was thinking about Smiley's motive. It's strange that we're being let loose without any sort of guardrail. We can choose our teams. We can mostly go anywhere. What if the odds of their plan succeeding are so minuscule that they're banking on something like this? What if this way, what they want to do, is almost guaranteed to succeed because they're making our goals unclear. The wording mattered, so maybe it does for us too. Interesting. Alright. What's this thing called again? It's not a lectern. The clergy uses a special ecclesiastical? Ecclesiastical nomenclature. Was it? Oh, right. It's called a pulpit. And interestingly, this one's got something on the surface. Three lines of text are engraved. A couple, madly in love, proclaims itself king and queen of hearts. Rich in diamonds, coveted by many, they get beaten with clubs. Wait, that's clover. This is clubs. Unavoidable if the king and queen put their riches before themselves. This definitely has to do with the card seats in the back. Well, I'm glad you're also putting this together. Are we actually gonna get to solve a puzzle? I'm so excited that's true. This symbol again. Well, where did we see this before? I don't remember. Surely it must represent something important. What the hell is it, though? I saw it on Smiley's clasp, right? Oh, okay. Is this some kind of weird religious cross? Interestingly enough, if you follow the line from the bottom, the ricochet along the symbol like it was hitting walls or something. You get one long in uninterrupted line. So boop, 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 and then boop, boop, boop. Something like that. Not sure if that's ever gonna be helpful, but may as well keep it in mind, I guess. I immediately forgot. <laughs> that's the funniest joke this game has had. <laughs> Instead, I brought my attention to the stained glass line up around it. There's a small button at the bottom of each window. Okay, so we must need to hit them in order. Technically, they're not windows, I guess, but I digress. I pressed the spades one. Nothing happened. Maybe there's a sequence? Wait, no, that is spades. This is clubs, right? Yeah, there's no, yes, yes. No, I was, so I was right the first time, okay. Um, so we'll, we'll do this in a second. Let me explore everything else first. This thing has a name. Is it an altar? I forgot if it had a more specific name. I looked at it for a little bit. Normally, these things had cloth on them to keep their surface clean. Brush my hand on the surface. No dust. Well, I'm sure that's good for you, given that you're a germ freak. This must have never been used, and yet it was also com kept completely clean. I mean, it's probably just relatively new, right? I can't imagine this all has been here for a long time. That's incense! That's incense! If it was out of the jar of incense, it would be called a jar of outsense. Boo. 
Despite it not being funny, I decided to write the joke down onto a piece of paper. This is a this is the level of commitment to this joke that is not deserved. I sent it over to E, who took a bit of time to read it. Outsense? What is? Oh. There was a small pause when she finally realized the stupid pun. Her crystalline laughter echoed for several seconds. Blessed be her voice. Alright, take a look at this last pillar here. This was the arch I saw earlier in the security room. Ah, okay. Just like I noticed, something was hanging off the curvature. I'm trying to see what they're talking about. Is that That's not this, because that's mirrored here. Maybe it just doesn't show it. Maybe it's some sort of hooked object. It's way too high. I hope we don't need to bring it down, because I'll never be able to reach up there. Even Jasmine can't reach it. <laughs> She's like... Eight feet tall. Maybe if we were several people, we could all hold each other in a tower and... Nah, no way. We'd crumble like a tower of Babel. ba da ba ba da church jokes. Considering the blind and deaf girl near me, I thought it was an appropriate reference since we couldn't communicate together well. Alright, fair enough. Alright, let's read this one more time. So, couple madly in love claims itself king queen heart. So it's gonna be hearts first. Rich in diamonds, coveted by many, they get beaten with clubs. Unavoidable, as if we can put their riches before themselves. Rich in uh, yeah, yeah, I don't need the hint. See how they make a pair. Running clearly makes a point to mention riches, too. So refer to the diamonds. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so hearts. The only thing I don't know is if spades is in there. And I just don't realize it, or if it's just not in it at all. Diamonds. Clubs. Now let's try spades? Hmm. So I am missing something then. Let's read it one more time. Madly in love, proclaims itself king and queen of hearts. Rich in diamonds, coveted by many. Maybe coveted is somehow spades that get beaten with clubs. Because the, the, then it's four evenly. Avoidable as the king and queen put their riches before themselves. So maybe that's something there? Diamonds before hearts or something? King and queen, riches before themselves. Got to make a pair. Okay, but now, well, now I got, wait, now but I, I got lost for a second there. It was, I mean, <laughs> this time. Uh, rich in diamonds, coveted by many. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try, we're gonna try hearts, diamonds, spades, clubs. And then go from there. Okay, hearts. Diamonds. Spades. Clubs. No. Okay. So then it's got to be something about the it's saying before. Couple couple madly in love. Oh, cuz it's two. So do we need to do hearts twice? Them to sell queen queen of hearts. Rich in diamonds, coveted by many, they get beaten with clubs. One avoidable is the king and queen put their riches before themselves. Together, yeah, because it, it points out together they make a pair, then riches. Okay, so let's let's try hearts, hearts, diamonds, clubs. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's try hearts, hearts. Diamonds, spades, clubs. No. All right, let's try heart, heart, diamond, club, spade. No. Okay. So then, then my assumption is that somehow it's the the they put the treasure before themselves. So we're gonna go diamond. Let's try one heart first, club. Okay, then let's try diamond, heart, 
Heart Club. Yes! Oh, okay, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. I missed what that said, though. Uh, press the button on the stained glass of clubs. After I did, since I apparently entered the sequence in the correct order, something happened nearby. Hey, I'm glad I finally got to solve a puzzle, <laughs> even if I had slightly more trouble with it than I probably should have. Turned around, the altar had opened its side nearest to me. Ooh, dead body. I walked behind the altar after it opened in the back. There was a lot of machinery underneath. Interesting. Some gears were spinning in empty space. If the gears had been closer, they would form an uninterrupted chain, yet I didn't see how I could have moved them. A socket below was clearly indicated I needed a lever of some sort. Maybe I could go and ask E for some wisdom about this? E, I need your wisdom. I conferred with E over the mechanism in the back of the altar. You say there are gears, correct? Let me take a feel so I know what it is. I hastily added that some of the cogs were moving and it might be dangerous. Her hand could get stuck there. That's a shame, but what about the rest? Are they immobile? I confirmed that fact. This was quickly shedding through my stash of paper. While E was debating over what to do, I thought it strange this room didn't have a spare lever somewhere to push into the socket. You'd think this place wouldn't make a puzzle like that impossible. Well, it clearly isn't. I think I get it. What do the cogs look like first? I couldn't draw a picture since she didn't see, so I described them instead. The various gears were metallic and held with large axles. The one gear that could move seemed to have some sort of empty socket in the middle. There were other pieces of machinery underneath, but none of them looked like they could move. An empty socket, you say? Maybe we can stick something there and use it to move the gear if there's a hole on the end of the axle like that. That's right. Maybe we could maybe we can do that and the lever is a red herring. Instead then, what I'm looking for is a smaller stick. I had to look around every nook and cranny again to find that little metal stick. Hmm. Is it the hook? Glanced up the pillar on the side, over this arch was something I recognized from the security feed, yep. Well, that's the lever I'm looking for. Sadly, I will never reach it. I don't think I can make it fall down. So where's the axle I need to find? I glanced at the large pot of incense on the altar. This thing was burning. This place would become spiritually charged. I don't have anything to burn it with, though. Absent-mindedly dragged a finger into the incense. Wait. Hold on. What's this? I dug into it. After taking out a handful, I saw something shiny stick out of the pot. I turned it over and dropped its contents on the ground in a big mess. This is a metallic stick. That's just what I was looking for. Who knew that to find it, I had to make the incense become outsense. <laughs> All right. Following E's advice, I tried manually moving the cogs. There is no way this is going to work. It worked with that axle. Is this going to somehow lower the thing and then that lets us do the lever? The cog connected and careful not to get my hand stuck in there, I removed myself in the premises. <laughs> A panel opened on the side of the altar in the back. It had been so silent, if I hadn't moved closer beforehand, I wouldn't have noticed it. The mechanism of this place is well maintained. In the panel, there was yet another piece of technology, a small terminal of sorts. On the display was a bunch of numbers. 8, 6, 2, 4, 1, 3, 7, and 5. Is this a code for the remote? I guess this is our- oh, right, the code to escape. I walked back down to the stairs to the benches, deciding to fetch E. Before we left, though, I remembered I wanted to investigate the possible link everyone shared. I need to ask her some things to be certain of my hunch. I wrote my questions on a sheet of paper. I'm surprised we're kind of... I mean, I, I, I'm curious about this, too. But I'm surprised we're wasting paper on this, given that they point out multiple times that we're almost out. What do I do? Hmm... Prior to my recent loss of vision and hearing, I studied at the University of Montreal. I was surprised by that. Once again, I found something adding to the theory involving the university. Marco, Ray, her, and I all shared that school. Not just any university, that one in particular. My disabilities were a recent development. Before that, I was a student in the field of applied nomadics. It is a very secretive field researching, um... It's kind of hard to explain, but it's about what thought is and what constitutes thought. I took extended courses in personality studies and neurology as well. It's all very complex. 
Anyway, that's what I did before my incident, though I never really got to do much on the applied side of that field. It was mostly theory. Even at the university, you had to take unrelated courses to fill up your curriculum. I assumed her inability to do the practical part stung from this dumb practice. And again, I didn't take her for someone who'd want to mess with thoughts and what thoughts were. That's a... Not about messing with it, Simon. Take a brief moment to think about what Marco studied in. It was also a scientific feel, but I just couldn't remember what it was. It too was something strange like that. A sudden flash of inspiration hit me. That's right. A was a researcher too. The old man shared a tangential link to those two. He was a researcher, researcher, which sounded sound scientific, and there was Ian Marco, both studying that stuff. All this left me without a link for Jasmine and the twins. Perhaps I was the link between Jasmine and science. So it went something like Marco A and E were related in to, to science in some way. Marco E, Ray and I were related by the fact that we belonged to the university. Jasmine and I were related because we knew each other. Jasmine's definitely got more going on than just that, though. I think that's very fair to say. That left the twins. I only needed to ask the twins if they shared any sort of link with Jasmine. That would have to wait until we were all in the same place, so the lounge was my next destination. For now, I took his hand to pull her into the lobby. We're done here? Amazing. It was remarkably fast, us. To be able to finish so quickly. I'd like to think I'd need quite a while before I finish, but any- Oh, Jesus Christ, Simon. <laughs> I was thankful she couldn't hear me as we took the train back to our hangout spot. The hangout spot. The trip back to the lounge was remarkably quiet, even if I could hardly contain my excitement. Agnos would have no choice but to let me know everything once I shared my discovery with him. What, do you know his name? He's not gonna care. I stepped out of the train with E, confident this would be our way out. Unfortunately, the noise I just heard robbed me of all my optimism. And folks, I'm sorry to do this. Oh, believe me, I am just as curious as you all are. But we are going to have to find out what that sounded a whole lot like a gunshot was. Until next time. Uh, gosh. Oh, I do want to go keep going. No, we're taking a break. Join me next time. Until then, this has been Downstage Gaming. I have been your host, Josh, and I will catch you all next time.